Yep, that's right. It's 2019 and it would appear VRM temps are being hidden. Okay, so I've decided to make a very dedicated video based on my findings recently uh, to explain everything that's been going on because a lot of people have been picking up why have you not had VRM temps in the reviews lately or, you know, at the start and like when I was doing CPU results and stuff. Now, it was because they weren't available. And by not available, what I mean is none of the software have been picking them up. And uh, what I wanted to do is sometimes it can be uh, some, the software can need sorting and sometimes it can also mean that the BIOS needs sorting. And with this, there's a bit of both, sadly. So I wanted to make sure I tested some more boards and I also wanted to make sure I kept up to date with all of the software. So um, as of, I think it's like the 20th of August today, we were on the very latest version of Hardware Info, the very latest version of Hardware Monitor, and they are my two go-to temperature programs. Now, uh, I use two because then you can kind of cross-check. Hardware Info is definitely the better of the two because with Hardware Info, it does actually give you a very directly indicated VRM result. Uh, with Hardware Monitor, then the result's normally there, but it's not always actually even marked. Now, sometimes if they're not marked, it's quite easy to be able to work out which one the VRM temp actually is. And you have a couple of options. You can either put a fan directly over the motherboard uh, VRM area and see if you have any big drops of VRM temperatures, or you can go the completely opposite way, and that's use a hairdryer or a mini gas blowtorch to go onto the actual VRM heatsink to get it really warm to see if you can do the opposite and spike the temps instead. Now that's a fairly kind of standard result for, or a standard way of testing to be able to see, you know, if you've got one that's the, the result, the temperature is actually there, but it's just not been marked properly. Now, none of these have the VRM temperature available in the software at all. Now the other ones in the stack like the formula, which if you want to go to the OC3D website, I've actually decided to put this review up rather than a motherboard review of that. But with the formula, the VRM temp is there. It's the same with the Hero as well. But one of the things I will say, which is very different about those two boards, is they do have VRM temperatures indicated in the BIOS. But these don't. These don't have any indicator of the VRM temperature in the BIOS. They also don't have any indicator uh, in any software whatsoever. And believe me, I have done both the cool down and the heat up test with all of these to try and see if we do have a temperature probe there somewhere that's now suddenly 40 degrees hotter and we've not had any luck. Now, also, the reason why I waited so long to do this is I gave Asus a chance to tell me what it was. And it did take a couple of weeks to get an uh, answer out of them, but it wasn't really an answer. What their, um, uh, their idea was, was for me to use a handheld temperature monitor with temperature probes that go out, strip the boards down, fit them underneath the heat sinks, and then get my results that way. There was no, oh yeah, we'll turn it on in the BIOS. There was no why it's turned off in the BIOS. There was no kind of explanation as to why it wasn't there. It's just kind of a way of, well, if you really want VRM temperatures that badly, you can do it this way. And the thing is, if I was to do test it that way, I'd have to retest all of the other motherboards as well, not just the Asus ones with the results missing. I mean, all of them, because they'd have to be tested the same way for it to be fair. And to strip all the boards down, including the heat sinks, rebuilding the time that it takes to actually do the warm up and the testing and everything as well. For a set of VRM results, it's actually an awful lot of work. And it's also a bit unfair as well. Now I get that not everyone's going to be particularly bothered about it, but for me, it's about the thoroughness of the testing. And this isn't the first time we've come across this either. They were all out hidden and blocked 
in uh, with the Z390 boards as well. And that was kind of, they said it was they, there was some kind of algorithm and they couldn't actually spit out an accurate result. It was just because they were they, they could have been shown as being a little bit warmer than they were. And it was, for me now, it's a bit like, you know, Asus parade themselves as being like the best motherboard manufacturer in the world, but yet the best motherboard manufacturer in the world is now not able to do what the other two manufacturers are, and that's give us a very simple and usable VRM temperature. Now with the more expensive boards, like the Formula, which I might add is £700, you'd kind of assume that if you are overclocking that board, and you're using that board uh, at home and it's a 24 7 kind of thing that you're not going to run into any issues with the vrms or at least you'd like to think so as well and believe me with the results is you know we're going to pop graphs up and stuff like that it does actually cool them really well but i would suggest that it's this end of the market where you actually want to keep an eye on your vrm temps because you might have bought uh, this board, but then you might have still spent quite a bit of money and gone and got yourself a 3900X. What happens if you've had a 3700X for six months and you get some bonus money at work and the 3950X has just come out and you're like, I want to go full bore with it. It's at that point that you're going to want to be able to keep an eye on your VRM temps. And it's a, I don't understand why it's not there anymore. Now the other thing that you kind of need to realise with me making this video is I'm knowingly making this video knowing this is more than likely going to make my life hell because I'm going to end up with loads of emails, phone calls, they're going to be moaning that I've brought attention to it. So when I do stuff like this, I don't do it lightly, which is, always, is also why I've left it and I've chased with emails and phone calls and questions. And to be fair, if it wasn't for an update recently with Hardware Info, there was no temperatures available at all. And it was literally Hardware Info updated. And that's why we now have the Hero and the Formula um, now showing. But we know with these, because we've actually gone back and retested all of the ASUS boards to make sure this is really fair and make sure I have very up-to-date screenshots and make sure that as of today, I've done everything I possibly can do to make sure that I've not missed something. These definitely don't have VRM temps uh, visible in the BIOS or in software at the moment. And the fact it's not in the BIOS is a fairly clear indicator that there's, you know, it's not really there at the moment. But one of the things they, they did say, and it's quite, um, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to put it really, but they said, oh, we, we don't have our um, contact for hardware info anymore so that we can work with them to get it fixed. I don't know about you, but that to me feels like a uh, enormous, and I mean like big porky kind of like excuse sort of thing, because I'm pretty sure if they went onto the Hardware Info website, you could find an email, and I'm pretty sure that if Hardware Info got an email from Asus, they'd, they'd answer pretty much straight away, because they're gonna wanna make sure that their software is really good, and if they can get an, you know a, a, a contact and make sure that everything's on par, I, I genuinely can't see uh, an issue. I get emails, um, replies pretty quickly, and I'm a no one. I'm not ASUS. I'm just literally saying to them, why is this not working? And then we kind of find out why. Um, and uh, I've spoken to a couple of other people in the industry about that specific point as well. And I'm not going to mention names because it would be unfair at this point. But they were like, no, that's a cop out because so and so still working there. And there's, you know, it's very easy to get hold of them. So I've kind of like checked and uh, checked around with a, a couple of these bits as well. So essentially, my reason for making this video is it would be nice to get a direct and non kind of excused based answer about these VRMs. But most importantly, it just needs to get added into the BIOS and get added into the software quick sharp. The boards have been out a long time now. Saying that you've not got a, a contact for hardware info isn't good enough. And you cannot be parading around the ROG logo and saying about being number one motherboard manufacturer in the world when you can't give your end users VRM temps, which is a very, very basic thing. But it's also because of the increasing amount of cores that we keep putting on these CPUs now. And there is a little bit more draw, although the Ryzen 3000 series is significantly better. It does need addressing. Now you can see in the graphs, 
that, to be honest with you, the, the only one that gets warm really is the MSI Carbon. But it does then make me wonder, are these worse? We don't know. And that's exactly why I've put the ASUS results at 150 degrees, which they would overheat at that point and they would have done thermal shutdowns. And they did not do that. I need to stress, to be honest with you, I actually don't think that they're going to top the graphs in a heat result at all. It's more the fact that they're not there. Uh, we don't have them. We don't know. So I'm going to uh, make them look worse than all the other ones in some kind of hope that things do get fixed. And I do want to close because, like I said, I know this is going to cause grief. Essentially, I'm just trying to get them to do something which I think is very, very simple. Um, uh, and it's just something that I think is an absolute minimum when you're ex being asked to pay kind of £200 plus for a motherboard. I think knowing your VRM temperatures isn't too much to ask. And if I was an end user that had spent a lot of money on a board, because obviously, do you know what I mean? you guys have to work really hard and i'm thinking if you know say wrong say i've bought prime and i've gone and bought myself a 3800x and i want to keep an eye on everything it's warm in the uk at the moment maybe you live somewhere abroad where it's a bit warmer as well i'm going to want to know and i don't think an end user should be made to fit thermal probes like i would have been asked to um because you're going to want to keep an eye on them what happens when you do your first blender run what happens if you've been playing games for 24 hours straight? You want to know, you want to have that bit of software which says to you, this is the lowest they've been, this is the uh, maximum they've been, this is your average, and this is what they're doing right now. And I think the VRM temps are just as important as the CPU temps. But we won't start about CPU temps because none of the Asus motherboards, with the um, including their own software, they don't actually take any CPU temps, do they? They're socket temps, and that still hasn't been fixed. And that was something I brought up a long time ago, and it still hasn't been fixed. But we'll save that for the next video.